my name is Katie Sainors with Sainors Wealth Management. And in this video, we're going to do a walkthrough Schedule C Form 1040. Let's get going. If you're using a tax preparation software or services of a tax accountant, still you need to locate Schedule C with the instructions. You can type Schedule C into your search engine, what are we using? And look for the irs.gov website. It will be about Schedule C, Form 1040 or 1040 SR. It's profit or loss from business for sole proprietorship. If you'll see here, the top link is Schedule C in PDF form. And the second link is for the instructions for Schedule C. You can do print version in PDF or ebook if you want. The PDF is fillable. I highly recommend using tax preparation software or tax accountant since it's complex just to do it on paper. But you should download and keep the instructions for Schedule C you're going to refer to them while you're preparing your taxes. You can choose the instructions that you can click and go by items, say gross receipts, and it will bring you to a specific place in the page. Or you can also do the print PDF version, and there you will have the searchable PDF file, which is 18 pages long. Let's get to the form. But before, I would like to go over the items that you will need in order to prepare your Schedule C. The IRS instructions for Schedule C. Your Social Security number. If you have EIN, which is Employer Identification Number, please locate that one. You can find it on your letter that you received after you submitted SS44. An income statement for the tax year or profit and loss statement, PNL your balance sheet, receipts or statements for any business purchases, regardless it's a large item like a vehicle or small items like paper. And if you sell something like t-shirts or pens, you're gonna have to have inventory count and valuation and your mileage records. Let's start with the form. You can find detailed explanations and the instructions, but I just want to pay attention to a couple items that might be confusing. As I said earlier, Schedule C is profit or loss from your business. This is for a sole proprietor. If you're a freelancer, you're driving Uber, uh, you're a real estate agent, or say you're a single member LLC. So it means just you, your sole owner. The first part up top from A to E. It will be your general information. That will be your name, name of a proprietor, your social security number, principal business or profession. Say you feel plumber, you include plumbing services, real estate agent, Uber driver. In section B right here, you're gonna have to enter a code from the instructions. That's your specific business or profession code. If you're using a tax preparation software, you're gonna have something as a drop-down box where you can go and pick the code. If for some reason it's not working out for you, you can locate it. Please go to the instructions. At the bottom of the page, almost to the end, you will see principal business or professional activity codes. You have to select your industry and then look up your specific business under those sections. You will need a six digit code next to it. Let's get back to the form. You located the code from the instructions, your business name. If you don't have a separate business name for your business, you can just leave it blank and don't worry about it. Also, if you have employer, identification number, EIN, you have to include it over here under your business code. 
Section E will ask you about your business address. Please do not put PO boxes. If you don't have business address and you work out of your home, you can just leave it blank. It's going to refer to the address on 1040. Items F through J will ask you about your accounting method. Majority of small business owners use cash method of accounting. If you sell items on credit or you have accounts payable, receivable in your statements, you're probably going to have the accrual method. Choice number three is highly unlikely. Next, it will ask you if you materially participate in the operation of this business. This means basically that you work in your business. You're running the business. You're going to have to mark yes. If you started or purchase the specific business in the current year, you have to mark the box too. If you made any payments in that year to independent contractors and you have to file forms 1099, you have to mark yes. This is for independent contractors that you paid more than $600 during the year. If you did mark this box as yes, you're going to have to put yes for box J. Otherwise, um, you're going to be in trouble. Part one is about your income. First box will ask you about your gross receipts. So anything that you made during the year, if you're a service provider, what are your receipts for the services? If the, you sell something like t-shirts or picture frames, what are your gross sales? If you're selling something and you had some returns from your clients, you're going to have to include them in box two. Cost of goods sold. If you sell t-shirts, you have to pay for those t-shirts. And we come back to it because we're going to have to pull the number from line 42. And then you arrive at your gross profit. If you have any other income that doesn't come from your general operations of your business, on line six, you're going to have to include this income. Say if you have a business account and you received some interest income from that business account, that's where you include your interest. Line seven will get you your total amount of your gross income. Part two will ask you about your expenses. Majority of the expenses in part two, they're self-explanatory. I would like to just go over some items because sometimes they cause a lot of questions when people try to prepare their own taxes. For car and truck expenses, you might use standard mileage or you might use actual expenses. Some people think, okay, standard mileage is much easier. Then you have to keep a precise log of all your business mileage driven. If you're using actual expense, then you have to keep all the receipts for your gas fill-ups, oil changes, car washes, etc. Next, I would like to talk about contract labor. Any contract labor that you hired people to do a specific job, even say if, if it's hourly or to complete some kind of project, that's where you're going to put the amount that you pay to those people. Do not include any amounts that you paid for wages on line 26. These are for your employees, for your W-2 people. This is just independent contractors. Line 13, depreciation. If you made some large purchases throughout the year, say you bought a vehicle or a trailer, you may not expense all of it in your part two, you're gonna have to depreciate it. So depreciation means you write it off during specific amount of years. Any time that you have a depreciation schedule, you're gonna depreciate some big purchases. I highly recommend using a tax professional. It can get really complex 
you don't want to attempt this on your own. Also, I would like to talk about box 18. This is your office expense. You will include only office supplies like paper, pencils, staplers, and your postage in here. If you have any other office expenses, you will have to include it in other expenses. Next item I want to talk about is your 24B box. Those are your deductible meals. Usually deductible meals for a business expenses, they are limited to 50% of your real cost. Say you spend $2,000 on business meals during the year, but you will include only 1,000 in your line 24B. Plus, all those deductible meals, they have to be related to your business. Keep your receipts and any kind of tracking information with dates and amounts and the purpose for those uh, lunches and dinners. When you use your p &L, your profit and loss, to fill out the part two expenses. If you have something that you cannot allocate to any other provided boxes, you can put them on line 27A, other expenses. And if we'll scroll down, this is our part five of Schedule C, other expenses. So basically, anything else that you have that is a business expense and it doesn't fit in the box above, you're just going to include item by item here, of course, with the amounts. And then you'll take the total on line 48 for your total other expenses. You will include it in here, 27A. With the box, 28, which your total expenses before expenses for your business use of home. You have to add lines 8 through 27A. This amount here should basically match to the total amount of expenses on your profit and loss statement for the exception of deductible meals because it's going to be a 50% limitation. So that's how you can check yourself. If your profit and loss statement for the expenses and total amount on line 28 is drastically different, please check all the boxes. It means you have an error somewhere. If you use your home office, you can deduct it as expenses for your business use of your home. You don't have to report these expenses anywhere else. If you do not use the simplified method, you're gonna have to attach form 8829 with your Schedule C. What is the simplified method? Simplified method where you enter the total square footage of your home and the part of your home that you use specifically for a business. As a safe harbor, the IRS allows you to use um, flat calculation of $5 per square foot with a limitation of 300 square feet, which comes down to $1,500. Once you're done and you calculated your expense for business use of your home, you will see your net profit or loss on line 31, right here. The profit amount will go on both Schedule 1 of Form 1040, Line 3, and on Schedule SE, Self-Employment, Line 2. Cost of goods sold. If you recall, we were talking about cost of goods sold in Part 1 for income. So if you're selling items like T-shirts, picture frames, you might have a cost of goods sold. And to come up with that number for your income, you have to go to the box in part three, right here. You'll see cost of goods sold. Method used to value closing inventory. I have to go over that 
if you're using a cash method, you're going to have to use a cost method of valuing your inventory. Also include cost of labor. If you have anything else, materials, supplies, and other costs, and you're going to calculate the number on line 42, that will be your total. And that total from line 42 will go on line 4 in your section part 1 income right here. If you're using your personal vehicle for business purposes, you're going to have to fill out the information in part 4. You're going to have to complete this part only. I repeat, only if you're claiming car or truck expenses on line 9. And you're not required to file a form 4562 for the business. So it means you do not depreciate the vehicle. Include the information when you place the vehicle in service, total amount of miles you drove. Then you have to provide a breakdown for business mileage, commuting, and other. Also, you're going to have to answer a couple questions regarding availability of the vehicle for personal use. And if you have another vehicle for personal use. And the most important, 47A and B, they will ask you, do you have evidence to support your deduction? You want to have those and you want to have the box Yes, checked on that. They want to have evidence in written form. Please keep good records of your vehicle expenses. This is all for today. If it's a simple return, you can do it yourself using the tax preparation software. If it's getting too complex, please reach out and use a tax professional to help you. Thank you for watching. Bye.